Did you know every day there are thousands of people selling on Amazon, making full and part-time income? In this video, I'm going to give you six different ways and business models that are pretty common and what people are using to make money on Amazon. I'm going to tell you the honest truth, the, the pros and cons of each one. I've got my own that I prefer, but I want to give you six different strategies. There's no right or wrong. I've seen them all work for different people. How? Well, I've been a seller for eight or nine years, I guess, but I'm also an accountant for a lot of Amazon sellers, so I get a unique look at you know what you can do and, and how profitable people can be. And I'll say this, that it doesn't matter if you're looking to add a, a little extra income, a lot of extra income. I don't care if you're 18 or 68, if you live in Canada, the U.S., or doing it from Costa Rica like I am. You can tailor this business to a lifestyle that you want, whether it's just extra income, whether it's full-time, replace the nine-to-five, whether it's starting small and growing it to do that. But it all, I've seen it all work, lots of different models. So I'm going to walk through six different ways, give you a quick intro on each one, like each kind of strategy, and then we'll look at the pros and cons. And But I will say, you know, a pro or a con to me might be different to you, um, you know, like one of them, for instance, a con, I'd say, is there's maybe not a lot of social interaction with one of the methods. But that might be okay for you. Maybe you don't like to be around people. and You want to stay at home, and maybe you live in the snow all the time and don't want to go outside. But I'm going to go through six different ways, so let's dig into them right now. Okay, let's just dig right in to number one. So number one is thrifting and garage sales. So you think about thrifting, it's like going to Goodwill, Value Village, um, different places like that where people usually donate goods and then they sell the used goods. So this is all about rolling up your sleeves, getting your hands a little dirty. Um, here's a couple of examples of things that I used to, I never, a lot of people start with books when they do thrifting and garage sales. I never started with that. I didn't do books. I've only ever sold a few books in my life. Uh, but things I went for was like, for instance, rock band. So rock band back when you had an Xbox or, um, uh, Nintendo Wii, the controllers and the drums and things like that are super valuable and they always seem to end up at the uh, uh, at the Salvation Army and the Goodwill store. So I used to buy some of these for, you know, like 4 or $5 and you're selling them for like 60 80 bucks, even more. I mean, look at this, you know, the best offer right now on a used drum set, $1,200. It's for an old video game, but it still sells. If you look at the Keepa data, you can see that it sells. So thrifting, garage sales, kind of, a really good entry-level way to get into selling on Amazon, um, even like stuff around your house. A lot of people have used books. I mean, just start with used books. Remember, Amazon at its beginning as a book selling place. So just going around your house and finding old books, maybe some CDs, I don't know. But that's um, kind of a, a good way to get started. And the pros and cons now on thrifting and garage sales. So the pros, stuff's usually cheap. You know, you're buying books, sometimes it's like 10 cents, 50 cents, you know. And some of them, like things like textbooks usually do well, certain types of cookbooks. Um, I mean, you can buy these for pennies on the dollar and sell them for, you know, 50 bucks, 70 dollars. It all depends, of course. But I mean, you know, that's one of the pros. You're buying things pretty cheap. You can find stuff around your house. You don't even need to go spend money, right? I mean, it can be, you can look around and, and find some books that, you know, you might be able to sell or even, you know, your, your kids' old university textbooks and things. Um, it's kind of fun, you know, when you're going out and you're trying to find it. Like, it's a bit of a treasure hunt because you never know what you're going to get. And it's, it can be so random. And, you know, there's new stuff usually coming in all the time. Um, it is kind of fun. I, I've done it. Lots of used goods stores. You know, people are always throwing stuff out. People are always getting new things. And there's always more inventory coming through. And even things like Facebook Marketplace. That's another kind of garage sale, right? I mean, people are selling stuff online that don't necessarily know what it's worth. Um, I know people that buy stuff off Facebook Marketplace and flip it on Amazon, just like that. Now the cons: thrifting, garage sales takes work, right? You know, you got to drive around a bunch of these. You have to drive. Um, there's always going to be work, so I guess that's that's a con. But you know, Amazon isn't also known for used goods, say like eBay would be. So you know, while you can do lots of used textbooks and you know game controllers and things, it's not like a mass of you know all kinds of used items. You know, there's a lot of categories you can't sell anything used. And usually it's single items, so you get one of this. And it's all, you know, like a lot of one-offs. Like, great, I found that one controller. 
but it's just one as opposed to like 10. So I got to create, you know, I got to add one listing. You're not creating any listings, but you're adding the listing in. You got to label it. And, you know, it's just easier to label 10 of the exact same item than it is to label 10 different single items, right? So that brings us to number two, what we call retail arbitrage. So this is where your the strategy is actually you're going into physical stores and buying stuff to sell on Amazon. Now, most people think that you have to go and buy on clearance. And while that's one strategy, you can also buy, you know, another part of retail arbitrage is buying items that are harder to find or, um, you know, are out of stock and retired and things like that. Like I have le- a picture of some Legos here. These Legos aren't retired, but some Legos, they only produce for so long and then they don't produce them anymore. So as things get harder to find, if you still have them, then you can, you know, ask for more money. You know, a lot of people think, okay, I just need to go to the clearance. I need to buy something cheap enough that then I can sell it on Amazon and make a profit after the fees. Yeah, absolutely. For sure you can do that. But you can also buy things that are harder to find, especially around Christmas time. You know, the the toys that are always a shortage, whether it's Furbies, whether it's Magic Mixies, whether it's, you know, Gabby's Dollhouse, whatever. You know, there's certain toys often at Christmas. I'm just using that as an example, where if you can find them, even if you're paying regular full retail for them, then you can sell them for more than that. So that is basically... Retail arbitrage. And what you're doing is when you go to these stores, you download the Amazon seller app and you take your phone and you scan the barcodes and you look it up. So I'll go and I'll scan, you'll scan one of the barcodes, like that little, all those little lines, squiggly lines, that little barcode on the item. You scan it, you look it up at Amazon. Amazon seller app, it's totally free. Scan it, see what it's selling for. You'd actually type in what your buy cost would be and figure out if you can make a profit on it. Obviously, look at sales rank and, you know, there's a lot more to it, but. That's, that's all it really is. So, you know, yeah, just you see a clearance section. Scan some items. See if you make some money, right? So that's retail arbitrage. Pros and cons of that. Pros. Lots of retail stores. I know there's a lot closing, but there's still a lot of different retail stores out there that you can go to. You know, I'm not, I'm not talking just Walmart. You know, you have Walmart, Costco, like Dick's. Like there's sporting goods. Uh, there's all kinds of different places that you can go to. Tons of retail stores. Uh, a lot of different items and brands, right? I mean, you know, whether you're talking toys, home goods, home, you know, hardware, kitchen items, clothing, shoes, you know, makeup, uh, the list goes on, right? And with every one of those categories, there's all kinds of different um, products that you could sell. I mean, you know, even just toys, like you're, you're doing Legos, you're doing Transformers, you're doing He-Man, you're doing, you know, dolls, who knows? There's lots of different things you can do. Especially um, like large chains, for instance, like Walmart, they'll do sales that are nationwide or, you know, they'll do sales that are very specific to certain stores because some places they're like the managers, they get a little bit more flexibility with what they can discount to. So some Walmarts you might go in and the managers decided, hey, I'm going to clear this down, you know, instead of $50 that it is and everybody else's Walmart, I'm going to take it down to 30. So, you know, you can find things like that. It's also using tools like BrickSeek and StockTrack. So they're both like one's an American one, one's a Canadian one. But websites like that allow you to go and see, okay, what's currently on sale? You know, here's a transformer toy that's on sale. Cool. Well, what's the price at my store? So you can look it up on the various retail stores and see, okay, the Walmart that's closest to me, it's still 50 bucks. But the Walmart that's, you know, two miles away, that one is, you know, marked down to 30. You've got tools like that that can help you find it. But I mean... You know, once you actually go to a store, you can dig around and look at all kinds of clearance and, you know, find find more things, right? It's also new stock, right? So the whole goal, the goal of retail arbitrage is you're buying brand new items and you're selling them brand new. That's what Amazon is. Third-party marketplace, you're selling brand new items. So when we talked about garage sales and thrifting, that's all going to be used, used books. This is all brand new. And that's, you know, the meat and potatoes of Amazon, right? New items. Now... The cons to retail arbitrage, you got to drive around. You got to go to the stores. And some stores aren't going to like you. You know, I used to do a lot of Nike, for instance. And every store, the manager just decided, you know, like, (laughs) there was no set rule. Some managers would say, hey, you're allowed 10 of this one type of shoe. And it could be 10 of this color and 10 of another color. And then the exact same day, you'll go to another store. And the manager says, no, you only allow 10 whatever colors if that's type of shoe. You can spread the 10 over, you know, two or three colors, but it's still only 10 in total. Other stores, they don't care. So, you know, it's you just, 
I used to try to be sneaky and you think, oh, you know, try to be on the down low. But I just, I'm too old for that. I just, you know, got more experience. And, you know, if I, I went somewhere and I saw, you know, something good, like I'd go to a Nike store. If I saw something that was decent and I wanted to get a bunch of, I would straight up just ask, hey, can I talk to the manager, you know, or I'd ask somebody on the floor and say, how much are you going to let me buy? You know, I want to buy a whole lot. And just do it right up because the last thing I want to do is pull 100 pairs of shoe boxes out take them to the front of the store, and then tell me, oh, no, we're only going to sell you 10, right? So just ask straight up. Standing in line, it's a pain in the butt. It takes more time, right, because you're just it's idle time. You're just standing there, you know. Maybe you're trying to figure out your gift cards and if you get any coupons, but, I mean, you're standing in line. And there's only so much, like, there's only so much you can carry, you know. When I used to go to the Nike stores, I've got two big bags with, like, you know, uh, four, maybe five pairs of shoes in each, you know, and I've got – maybe three bags in each hand. So, you know, you're limited to how much you can physically carry. You know, and especially if you're in a, a mall or you've got to go out, you're walking back and forth. And then space in the car. You know, funny enough, like, the car gets packed. If you buy a whole bunch of stuff, you're on a roll. Your car's full, whether you've got a minivan, whether you've got a SUV. But you, you're, you're limited by the amount of space. So some people actually, like, rent a truck or rent a van for the day if they're going to go out and they know they're going to hit a bunch, and it's like Q4 or something, let's rent a van for a day or two and just drive around and clean everything out. So, which brings me to online arbitrage. So online arbitrage is very similar to retail arbitrage, except you're going to websites, and you're doing it all through the interweb. Okay. Now, this is my favorite, because this is what I do, because I live full-time in Costa Rica, so I'm doing everything remotely, and this is what my chosen what I spend most of my time doing as far as I do all of them. I've done all six that we're going to go through, but what I do the most of right now is online arbitrage. Okay. So you go to different websites, like these three images at the top here, these are just coming up on uh, BrickSeek. You know, here's things that came up. This boot, for instance, which I saw today as I'm filming it, when I made these slides, I'm like, oh, let's see what's actually current. So this boot dropped. You know, it says eighty two ninety five, but really this boot was selling for about fifty five dollars. It's just a little calculator that I have. This is AZ Insight. I'll put a link down below if you want to grab it. You have a free trial, but it's a Chrome plugin, and you put it on your uh, when you pull up an Amazon listing, it shows you all this. It's got the calculator, it's got variations, stock check, all kinds of tools. But this will quickly show you. Okay, so if I normally sell this for fifty five dollars, and I could buy it right now for fifteen dollars, I'd make twenty five dollars. And you can see down here, like, look, the Amazon. Uh, price forty nine thirty three. That's their thirty their thirty day. The ninety day is fifty hundred eighty day. So we know using this data that Amazon usually sells it at like fifty bucks, right? And we can probably get a little bit more. So hey, I just up to fifty five when I looked at the Keepa data. Maybe we get it, maybe we don't, but that's what we do. So this is online arbitrage. Lots of stores to go to. You're just buying items there. You know, I mean, this is something that hey, this is actually an Amazon flip. And yes, you can do that, and I do a ton of them. So you actually buy the item on Amazon on sale or cheaper than what they normally sell it for and then flip it back. Or you buy hard-to-find toys, and I've done this too. You buy hard-to-find toys, Amazon comes in, you know, 20 or $30, and you buy it out. And then you send it right back into Amazon and sell it. Now you've got to get it, receive it, send it back in, but Amazon flips are totally fine. Just don't use your Amazon Prime account. Have a separate account. That's why I recommend getting an Amazon business account, but that's later videos. That's more advanced stuff. I'm just showing you the different ways you can make money. The other thing here, like I, I put some at the bottom here, two times cash back. So I'll put a link below, but you can sign up for things like Rakuten. So Rakuten is a cash back website, so you go there first. So if I'm going to go to Nike, I type Rakuten.com first, I go there. Then I see Nike. I click that link it'll open up a session and open up another browser for Nike. If I buy at Nike, then I will get 8% cash back either in a check or at PayPal, right? So it takes like three months to get through, but it's an affiliate commission kind of thing. So it's just cash back and every once in a while they'll have bonuses. So this was the bonuses when I pulled together this slide that we're up right now. So Nike's normally 1.5%. It was up to 8% today. If I'm going to buy stuff anyways and get an extra 8% cash back, I mean, that's, that's pretty juicy. So, Pros and cons of online arbitrage now. The pros. Like stores, there's a lot of websites out there. The biggest one for me, you can do it anywhere. As long as you need internet, you've got internet, and you have a credit card. You can basically do it. I mean, I do it from Costa Rica, and I'm having stuff shipped to Canada and the U.S. Easy. 
lots of tools. I mean, I just showed you a couple of things there. AZ Insight, there's a lot of tools and data that, you know, is really quickly available. You can see it on screen. Just makes life so much easier. Um, additional tools for like getting coupons and extra discounts. I mean, the cashback is one, but I've got other tools and plugins that I'll talk about in another video that show you like, hey, you're on this website here. Here's a bunch of coupons. Here's, you know, five or 10. Do you want us to try them? And the, the tools will automatically try the coupons and try to lower your, uh, um, your buy costs and save you money right there. Sweet. Stuff comes to your door. You don't have to go out. You don't have to drive around. It arrives, literally. Guy or girl rings the doorbell. Here's your stuff. Sometimes they ring it, sometimes they don't, but you don't have to go anywhere. And you can order a lot quickly. I mean, you know, a few clicks of a mouse, and sometimes I forget about this, then all of a sudden I'll see a photo of all the packages that showed up at my helper or my prep center or somewhere, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's what 100 Lego sets looks like. But, you can, you know, it's, it's like poker. You, you find something good, you want to get your money in and get that deal um, or something that's really good, then you put your cash in and you can order, you know, like if you're just buying one or two here or there, sometimes that's annoying, you know, and if you, you're feeling really good with it, Great, I can buy 100 items, you know, or I can buy 50 items. It's just easy with the click of a mouse. Um, the cons to it, you know, sometimes items come to damage, right? Like you're in the store, you can inspect the box, see what it's like. Um, sometimes they just get damaged. You know, Amazon's terrible at shipping, so sometimes they'll throw individual, like if you're doing Amazon flips, you know, sometimes I do collector toys and stuff, and they'll just like um, Funko Pops, they'll toss them in a, uh, like a, one of those padded envelopes and it just gets all mangled. So you got to do returns, that stuff. That sucks. You miss the in-store deals. So, you know, when I'm talking about going into a specific store and that manager decided, hey, I'm going to mark things down, you know, really far, um, you miss out on those. Like one that we got we got a few months ago was um, Lego minifigures. They come in these little packs, and you get one in it, and it's usually like $5. And for whatever reason, the store we were in had marked them down to $0.49, cents, and they had a massive bin. So I had a helper who was doing it, and she found it. And she just went to the garden center, got a shovel, and just scooped them out of the bin and put them in her uh, checkout bag. And I think we bought about 1,500 of them and sold them all at Amazon. So you miss some of those opportunities because that would never be on a website just because it's a, an in-store exclusive. You know, a manager just wants to blow stuff out and get it gone. Um, and you don't interact with people. You know, I mean, you know, after a while, sometimes it, it can be lonely. You're just like, well, I'm here by myself. I'm at the computer. Am I talking to people? Like for me, I'm, I'm okay because I got other sellers that I talk with, chat with online. Um, so it works. But some people do like to interact with people. And, you know, you can just sit down and hammer out online arbitrage and not talk to anyone, not socialize. So wholesale. A couple images here. So wholesale is when you're basically, um, you find a company that will sell to you for less than the retail price. And wholesalers, so usually the process is the manufacturer will sell to a wholesaler. Um, the wholesaler would have, you know, it's usually specialized like toy or gardens or whatever types of items. And they might buy from a couple different manufacturers and then they would wholesale out. They would buy bulk from the manufacturer and then they would wholesale it out and distribute to, you know, kind of like retail stores and whatnot. So a lot of people really like the idea of wholesale. It can be great because, you know, I mean, you're, you're just you're buying for less than retail. And if you sell it at retail and there's a margin there, like, fantastic. I mean, what I've done here, this is a simple Google search, you know, wholesale uh, lawn care supply, I think. And this is what came up. This is an example of what you kind of get. If you contact a wholesaler and you're actually successful in getting one, someone will send you a list of what they have. And this was a sample list of, I forget who it was, but, you know, you got UPC and the description and the cost and the retail. Um, so, yeah, it can be another good strategy and none of these can just you know totally stand on their own like you can do retail arbitrage i mean i do a lot of online you know we do some retail where you know we're going into the store i have some wholesale um you know you can mix and match right but just you know getting an understanding of the different types so the pros obviously you can usually buy a lot of an item you can do it anywhere um, sometimes they will actually, if you get a, a wholesaler that will play ball, some of them will actually send it in for you. Like I have one, I send her the, uh, partnered shipping, um, UPS labels. She tells me how many is in a case. It's always case packed. So the case has eight units. This is the weight and this is the dimensions. I send her the shipping labels 
and then to get the label put on, I just let I pay Amazon to do it, you know, 30 cents or 25 cents a label or whatever it is, 10 cents, and they just do it. But she sends it right in. I don't even have to touch it. Now, that's pretty special, and that's, I've had that account for uh, probably seven, eight years now, but, you know, they're not all like that. And, of course, usually you get brand approval. Now, some brands, you have to be approved to sell them. So, you know, if you're buying wholesale, then you're buying from a legitimate source, and usually they'll approve and allow you. The cons are it can be very, very difficult to get good accounts because you think about it, everybody's just Googling and searching the exact same stuff. And the last thing these wholesalers want in the manufacturers is another, you know, another person, another seller selling on Amazon, right? Like, I don't need 10 people selling the exact same item on Amazon, 10 different sellers, all for the same price. And you're competing with the other people that bought it for the same price, unless they get volume discount and maybe they can buy it a little bit cheaper. But if they're buying from the same wholesaler, they're paying the same price as you. So, you know, whoever basically is willing to take the least amount of margin. You know, I've had items where I started selling it very early and I know other people found the wholesaler and were buying and I just slowly watched the margin creep down till it wasn't worth my time. The other thing is, usually at wholesale, you have to maintain certain prices. They call it like MAP, um, where you have minimum advertised price. So a manufacturer will say, hey, this, you know, like toy has to be sold for nineteen ninety five, no less, and you have to sell it for that. And then the crappy thing is, you know, if you're buying wholesale, you have to do that. But if I'm an arbitrage guy and I just bought it on sale at Walmart, I don't have to sell it for that. I just bought it and I'm going to flip it. The other crappy thing, too, is that often Amazon won't abide by them. So Amazon will buy the exact same item, but they won't sell at that minimum advertised price. So the brand is telling you, you got to sell it at 19 And you're like, well, Amazon's selling the exact same one, but they're selling it for seventeen ninety nine. How can they do that? Well, they're Amazon. They just don't care. We tell them that they need to, but they don't. That's a con of wholesale. All right, number five, private label. So private label is what a lot of people talk about a lot. You'll see on YouTube. Um, it is basically creating your own product. Okay, so think of, this is when people think of, okay, I'm going to buy an item from China. I'm going to go on Alibaba.com. I'm going to find something. I'm going to call it my own brand. And... I'm going to change the packaging and sell it on Amazon, okay? So there's good ways to do private label and bad ways to do private label. So this block, this Shastibu, I can't even pronounce it, shape-shifting block. I use this because my sons love them, so we have a couple. It is the number one toy on Amazon, or almost number one. It's always like in the top ten. It has a best-selling rank of five. I mean, just look at the average, the estimated monthly sales and revenue that these blocks are bringing in. This thing is flying. It's very specific. It's very cool. You fold them all out. They can combine to multiple. Like, it's an awesome, very cool toy. It's, you know, the next fidget spinner. It's wicked. But it's creative. It's specific. You know, this company created their own, uh, had it manufactured, patented, you know, all that jazz, right? That's the right way. That's the, the perfect way to do private label. Then we've got the bubble mower. And if you look, I mean, the, the top two are the literally exact same with slightly like every, like even, they've just rearranged the position of those little blowy things, right? You know, it's star, it's heart, circle, star, you know, star, heart, circle. Like it, it's the identical mower, almost the exact same art. But one is the Jumella and one is the Sif, what, well, I don't know, whatever that is. But you can see that these are bad private label items, you know, where somebody's just taking this one item that's manufactured from uh, probably from China and put their brand on it and barely, like, haven't even done their own photos or anything. It's just so then you know, this is you're competing with this guy. Like, the two, does one look any better? Which one are you going to buy? Well, the one at twenty four ninety eight, it's a little more expensive than the twenty one ninety nine. It's literally, I guarantee, the exact same thing. But look at the reviews, you know, twenty nine fifty eight. So the new guy is like, well, I got to give more of a coupon to get you to buy it because I don't have enough feedback. You know, like, this is what this is what you get into, right? So that's the not good way. But that's basically what private label is. I mean, you know, you're having someone else manufacture an item, or you're taking another item that is is available and calling it your own brand. Okay. Pros, you're creating your own brand. I mean, the theory is, you know, if you created a brand that you could eventually sell 
or you know like blow up and do great and have your own Shopify and sell it on Walmart and everywhere else, right? Um, you're also the only seller, or you should be the only seller in the listing. You know, other people get into trouble, but I mean, you should be the only person selling because it's your brand. And you can order large quantities. You know, you want a hundred made, you want a thousand made, you want ten thousand made. You know, you're 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 having it manufactured, and it's coming to you. So it's your item. You can you know just write purchase orders and buy more. The cons are large upfront costs. I, I also think it, it can be very risky because it's just one specific item that you're going into, right? You know, the other the other things, whether it's wholesale or arbitrage, online retail, whatever, you know, you can buy two or three of this item or, you know, 10 of this item. You're only, you're, you know, you can take small risks, you can take bigger risks, but, you know, if one item and you bought 10 of doesn't work, it's not going to cripple your business. You know, if this one item that you launch with doesn't work, that, that is your business. There's a lot more parts, like when you're doing a listing on for Amazon, like arbitrage and stuff like that, like if I want a specific Lego set, the listing's already there. It's created with the images and all the details. I just say, yeah, I want to sell on it. There's one listing. It's not like eBay where you got multiple listings. There's one listing for each item. So this Lego set, I list it for sale. I put my price in. That's it. It's easy. The listing's there. But if you're doing private label, you've got to create your own listing. So you've got to populate all that and write the descriptions and some SEO in there. And you've got to take photos of it or have photos and, you know, like package design and, you know, all this jazz. And never mind, you've got to say, okay, do some research, decide what you want to make, get samples from different manufacturers, look at the samples, negotiate, you know, like it's, it's, it's a business, you know, it's very, there's a lot more moving pieces to it. And generally there's longer lead times. Because if you're ordering something, say, from China, you know, it's got to get over here and you've got to order it and pay for it and they got to manufacture it. You know, like it, takes, it can take months just to get an item. And the competitors, as you saw, like with a bubble mower, <laughs> they're selling the exact same thing. So, you know, sometimes you hear horror stories where people are, oh, great, I made this. And, oh, look, the manufacturer who actually made it for me is also selling under his own brand the exact same item on Amazon. So while we're not competing on the same listing, our listings are side by side and they're pretty much the exact same item, right? And number six, it's what we call print on demand. So print on demand is basically you've created a digital file and when somebody buys it, it's printed or manufactured just only when they buy it. So you see some examples here. The first one is, is t-shirt, this narwhal t-shirt. This is actually from um, uh, Merch by Amazon. So what you do is you just, you know, this guy has created, guy or girl, has created this T-shirt, this Narwhal T-shirt. So they made that little graphic, and they uploaded it onto Merch by Amazon, and they picked their colors, and then they picked the price of the one to sell it for. And if it actually sells, if somebody goes on to Amazon and buys that and says, okay, I want a size medium in black, yep, boom, buy it. Amazon goes, has the actual medium black shirt made right there with your logo, you know, with this image on it, printed, excuse me, packed up and shipped out on demand within a few days, right? And then you get a royalty. Same with the one in the middle. This is uh, Amazon Sellers Planner that we create. Uh, my wife and I do it. And this is specifically for Amazon sellers. But we created this big digital file. It's a year-long planner. It's got lots of information in it. And when you buy it, Amazon presses print and prints whatever, 100 pages or whatever's in there and prints that one and ships yeah. it out to you, right? That's what these other t-shirt examples are you know like this dad joke loading and words be world's best father it's not what it says but um funny you know like you just create these i mean you're just creating digital files and uploading them and then when somebody actually buys it then it's just made on demand so it could be t-shirts it could be hoodies it could be mugs it could be stickers you know there's all kinds of different print on demand and you know some of this is through amazon some of it's through other Websites that you can kind of integrate through, but print on demand is pretty popular, especially with um, Merch by Amazon, it's called, and KDP, which is uh, their print on demand um, book service. So, you know, some people do like journals, like we have the planner slash journal. Some people do what they call low content books, and low content books are things like, um, you know, maybe like a mileage tracker or, you know, just a book with a bunch of lines in it, and, you know, it's for journaling or it's for taking, you know, oh, um, your pet, taking your pet in to get their shots, you know, things like that, or oil changes, or, you know, just, there's all kinds, like, you just start going down there, or 
or you do like coloring books or lots of different things. But that's the, the print on demand. So the pros of that is minimal upfront costs, right? I mean, you know, it's just your time. Or, you know, you can pay somebody, but that, that might be a con too. But, I mean, you're not buying and investing in inventory. You're basically investing in the design, a digital design that can be printed and resold hundreds and thousands of times. And you just get a royalty every time it goes. Lots of unique designs, you know. Like, if you want to have 10,000, 100,000 print-on-demand, you know, combinations of, you know, one T-shirt design and you just change the name in it or you change, you know, like best dad and you've got best mom best what you know like you can do all kinds of different variations there's no inventory capital and it's just easy to add more and scale it up and have a larger portfolio cons are you gotta you gotta have some creativity and you gotta have some design skills you know like there's lots of tools and some things that are very free and you can you know easily create them even on your phone but the really good designs you know you you need some some design skills. So maybe you have to actually hire someone to do it and go on Fiverr and get a graphic designer to help you. Uh, generally smaller margins because, you know, we're, we can buy stuff in arbitrage for like $10 and sell for 30, 40, 50, 100, who knows sometimes, right? You, you're making massive returns. Whereas this is just, you know, a royalty, right? You know, you're getting $1.50, you're getting two fifty, three dollars $3 every t-shirt. You know, you sell a $15 t-shirt, get like 30 bucks. I'm sorry, $3 versus, you know, selling a $15 item and profiting 15. So, and competitors can scale quickly and copy. You know, you'll, you'll see that if all of a sudden you get a Rad Dad t-shirt or something that's doing very well and, you know, everybody can see that in the, the sales ranks that it's going up and doing well, competitors will just knock it off because it's real easy. And, you know, if they can't do it, they just go to Fiverr and tell someone like, hey, make me this graphic design, tweak it a little bit, slightly different color, boom, the exact same, right? And then, you know, they can take over some of your sales. So to recap... These are six ways right now, this year, you can still make money on Amazon. Part-time, full-time, I don't care what time. Thrifting garage sales, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale, private label, print on demand. Hopefully this has given you a little bit more of, you know, kind of exposed you to some of them. You know, I've talked to a lot of people and they're like, oh, I ever thought it was just private label and they didn't even know that you could buy items in store and buy items online and, and sell those brand new back on Amazon. A lot of people don't even know that. And a lot of people don't even know that you can buy items from Amazon and sell back on Amazon. So there's so many different ways to go about doing it. So if you want to learn more, you know, obviously I got more videos here. Join my Facebook group. It's for free. Facebook.com slash groups selling from the beach. We're at selling for the beach.com. Hopefully this may be, Open your eyes, get you exposed to something else, and uh, hopefully you take the plunge, set up an account, and get started. Till then, see you guys next time.